Hello and welcome to to the final bell, the official Geelong Cats podcast. It is great to have you with us. Lots going on in the footy world, lots to talk about, but we're going to talk Cats wins because they chalked up another one, third on the ladder, just a game back from Port Adelaide and the Brisbane Lions. So very, very exciting. We are brought to you by Panther Tyres, as we are each and every week. We appreciate the guys from Panther Tyres, all their support throughout the whole year, through lockdowns, through restarts, through footy frenzies through everything. Panther Tires have been with us. So big thank you to the team there. I am joined, as I am every single week, by two very knowledgeable men and um, highly sophisticated gentlemen, Matthew Stokes and Scott <laughs> Gowan. Hello, boys. Uh, hello, Cameron. You're scraping the barrel today, clearly. Yeah. yeah. Recording studio in the car. One. Stokes, he's locked himself in his bedroom again. He's never going to come out. So it is great to see you both. We've got the skipper on a little bit later oh. on, Joel Selwood. Wow, we. Yeah, we get the big guns here on to the final bell sometimes. Sometimes we just, it's just the three of us talking and um, the listeners are probably devastated. But uh, we're going to talk Cats win. So surely they're not going to be devastated now. It wasn't as impressive as the St Kilda and Port Adelaide wins. But it was a win nonetheless against a more spirited Adelaide Crows than probably what we've seen for 2020. Uh, they just did enough, Scotty. That's what they had to do. Wow. You guys have played in these games when you were flying in your premiership years. You just, they were last. It was at home. They were going to offer a bit early. You just, you don't go through your paces, but you, it's, you're not going at 150%. So I think it was. A good win, you know, Tomahawk still did his thing. Guthrie again. Got I think he got ten coaches votes. I think he's up to the top four or five of that. So yeah, I wasn't some were slightly concerned at half time, but I think they did what they had to do. Get out of there. Stokesy, were you worried at any stage in that game that it was going to go a little pear shaped? No, not at all. I think uh Scotty and yourself hit it on hit the nail on the head. I mean these games you have, um, they've been up for a long time. I think with the, the, the brand of footy they've been able to play um, and against the top teams, um, obviously going there um, to Adelaide um, had its own challenges, but they, um, they got through and did what they had to do to get the win. Am I right in saying they flew in the day of the game, Scotty? That's how it works? Yeah, yeah, right? that's how it goes now. I mean, Port Adelaide do it the other way. I think teams, that's how they're all doing it now. Fly in, fly out. It's a hit and run mission and it's working for everyone, I think. Just complete tangent for a second. Is that what we're going to be able to do to Perth? No, well, no, I don't think so. So this is why I'm a bit confused with the WA Premiers making the play for the grand final. And I think the Eagles are pushing for the postseason buy so then they can get home and that would help teams go over there to play them in the first final. So... There'd have to be tweaking of the rules, the quarantine rules, because you can't do two weeks before a final, obviously. No, no, definitely not. That'd be too big an advantage for the for the home Perth team. So you can still fly and fly it to Adelaide and, of course, Queensland's yep. um, the, the centre of the AFL universe at the moment. But, yeah, I'm, I'm a little confused about WA as well. Anyway, we'll, uh, we'll get to that a little bit later on as we get towards finals. You mentioned Cam Guthrie. Oh, right now. What's going on? Well, it's something I suppose Geelong fans have been hoping for and maybe expecting, but also a little nervous that perhaps it wasn't going to happen. Perhaps his ceiling was his form of the previous three or four years and, okay, a really good, solid, dependable player. Um, And those expectations of him being an elite midfielder were um, unwarranted and, and, and not correct. So that was the concern of Geelong fans is probably my concern as well. Uh, Yeah, I know. He wasn't consistent. No, absolutely. No, that's... He's hit his his highs. This year, he's blown me away. He's a clarity of role, Lingy. Clarity of role. You know what I mean? There's... Clearly, he's first picked in the midfield and he knows what he's doing. He's not running with guys. I don't know. He just seems to know exactly what he's doing. He's not in and out. He He seems to be the main person in there, to be honest. Yeah, I agree. That would help. Um, I also think... Uh, you're right. He's not running with anyone. Any, any talk that he's tagging or anything like that is no. incorrect. But he is a two-way runner in the midfield. Yeah. 
and he is getting back to help. He does run better than um, Mitch Duncan's an outstanding runner in that Geelong midfield. But as far as hard two-way running, aerobic type running, he's better than... Like, Dangerfield's not an aerobic runner. He's a no. power athlete. Joel Selwood, can't, uh, unfortunately, a couple of injuries and that, can't quite do it as much as he used yeah. to. But he is a hunt the ball, see ball, get ball. Unbelievable at it, but he's just hunting the footy all the time. Cam Guthrie is the best balance runner in that midfield along with Mitch, um, who can get back, support his defence, then join in attack. So he's, he's actually better suited to be playing longer minutes in the midfield oh. anyway, compared to the other guys who are uh, um, phenomenal effort and power players, but who then need rests. They need to either walk to the next stoppage or get themselves down forward for rest. Guthers doesn't need he can he can he can churn a few Ks through a game just through his aerobic capacity. Is that is that fair, Stokesy, do you think? Yeah, I reckon you're pretty spot on there. And I think what what um what Guth is is a unselfish player. So mm. for a lot of years he was just happy to play his role and do what was needed from the team, whether it was to play half back, whether it was to play on the wing, whether it was to tag. And I think with uh, you know, Mitch and Sell um having, you know, Injury interrupted seasons, and then obviously Paddy playing a little bit more forward. What it's been able to do is he's been able to make it his own um, and play in the midfield without having to worry about oh we need someone in the back line, we need you to go and sit on this bloke. And I think that yeah. just a bit of confidence to be who he is. And um, I, I really think he's just a really talented team player in the years gone by. Um, but being the extra confidence of being able to say this is you know kind of your midfield now. Um, oh. with Sam Managola and, you know, Mitch Duncan instead of it being Joel, Tim, Dun- uh, Tim Kelly, I said Tim Duncan. <laughs> um, Tim Kelly and then Mitch Duncan. These guys are feeling like they're actually part of the, the team and, and part of the midfield. Just a quick another side note. You mentioned Tim Duncan there. Could you imagine how much NBA playoffs the players would be watching right now? Oh. In hubs, they would be watching back to back to back to back games. There's no training between the hours of what ten and <laughs> one, is there? No team meetings, not allowed. There's not a lot of homeschooling going on in the Ling household <laughs> either between those hours. How about our Celtics? NBA. That that was very impressive. Now, uh, mm. Stoker, your man, Jackie Boy, <laughs> best game for the year. Great stats, tackles, everything. Tackles. That's what I love to see. I, when I think when you're trying to find your way. Um, not only in a new club, um, but also trying to find your, your way in the system and, and throughout a year trying to get yourself in a, a good frame of mind to you know, get the confidence up. Tackling is something that she'd always go back to, especially someone like a Jackie boy. Um, you know, and to see him hunt the footy, but also hunt the man as well, they just went hand in hand with each other um, on the weekend. And um, he was really impressive. Um, hopefully his knee's not too bad. Um, sorry, he's hobbling around there for a little bit, but... I think, I just honestly believe, like I spoke about all year, he gives us something different in that midfield yeah. because we do all have similar types, you know. Um, so if we can have him to, to be a bit of a burst player, uh, especially at the end of quarters where I think he, you know, can use his speed to get away and, and penetrate long into our forward line and give Hawkey chances one-on-one, I think we're, in a, we're a lot better team when we have him and that dynamic into, into that mix. Well, come finals time, Stokes, you're right. So... Not to harp on the past, but the moments that have hurt the Cats in finals, um, and think of last year's preliminary final, is just that inability to sustain this incredible finals-type intensity around the contest, pressure at the opposition through the middle part of the ground. Unfortunately, Richmond just broke the Cats a little bit last year and the goals piled on a bit. It was Dangerfield, Selwood, Duncan... Kelly just bang, bang, bang. And then they need a rest or they drop off. Um, and it's natural. Everyone does. The greatest players do. That next slot, it just lulled a little bit. I feel <coughs> right now so much better placed in that the starting midfield of maybe it's Guthrie, Selwood, and call it danger field for now, the starting three in the middle of the ground. When they go out, it's then... Menegola, Jack Stephen, um, I'm probably forgetting players here, Parfit. but Parfit, yes, thank you, yeah. Stokesy. 
Atkins so, goes so, in there. Yeah. So the, that that frenetic pressure and that frenetic hunting of the footy, and then hopefully winning it and chaining it or transition running, whatever it might be, doesn't let off as much. And then those guys see it through. Then you bring the others. There's an ability to sustain a type of play now, which I don't think the Cats have had yep. for quite a few years. I think um, I think we go into this final series knowing that we've got a, an even contribution of players. I think for a long time we've had you know superstars and then we've had sort of the, the rest of the guys. There's no middle gap where these guys have brought their games to oh. you know, the middle part and the, the guys at the top aren't as dominant as they used to be. So it's being forced to for our players to be able to um, come to the fold a little bit to give them a handout. And I think that gives me confidence going into a final because it, like you know, Lee, it's not about individual brilliance, brilliance in finals. It's about an even contribution of the team. Um, and if we can do that, we're in a lot better stead this year than we have been in previous years. Um, and in sometimes, it's, sometimes it's the ability to sustain it for so long that eventually you just break the opposition for five or six minutes. And those three goals you might kick mm. in six minutes because of all the work you've done is what ultimately wins you the game. You're right, Stokes. Sorry, Scotty. There's a couple other across the edges, you know. Bradley Close, he, geez, he uses the ball well. He makes good decisions for, for what, game number four or five. And our man Jordan Clark was just good to see him. I mean, he adds, I know he didn't get it that often, but the leg speed he provides, again, is that another layer that this team needs, I reckon. Yeah, he adds a different look as well, doesn't he? With that, yeah. with that run and carrying a bit of dare. And um, he's obviously got aspects to his game that are just going to grow over the years and need to grow over the years, but certainly going to be important. What? How did... So they had their first decent break between Port Adelaide and this game. Now another uh, reasonably decent break compared to others. It's still... It's, it's probably what we'd call the old six-day turnaround, isn't it, Stokesy? Yeah. The... But some decent break. What are they going to do with the team heading into the Bulldogs? Oh. Do you, do you uh, keep resting? Do you keep rotating? Do you, or do you settle it for a couple of weeks in a row? So, so here you go, Scotty. No, I mean, well, who do we have? Zach Tui was rested and he'd been playing well. The skipper, yep. we'll find out if he's coming back. Who else did they rest? Harry got rested. Yes. Uh, who was the other one who came out? Uh, Fogarty got dropped. Fogarty, Fogarty. Fogarty, but... There Big was Sav more. came back. So, I don't know. Yeah, I'm... What do you think, Stoker? How do, do you keep the Bulldogs... You will, I think it's courses, horses for courses. The Bulldogs forward line, they got Norton, maybe Bruce, but they're pretty small. Yeah. You probably don't need Harry Henderson. We keep saying that, but yet they play together and they play really well. They bloody, they're bloody playing very well. Um, yeah. I think this is probably, you know, we've got two games, I think, left at a, a, a final-like team, so them and Richmond. Yeah. I think we need to probably start to think about the, the bigger picture. Um, we need to start thinking about... Um, we're playing a pretty good team, uh, so we need to start to get our, um, our game plan that we're, we're going to go into with the finals kind of not set, but start to see how we match up, see what's, um, what is our winning formula because I don't think you can play around with it too much. I think you can play a little bit with the individuals in that, but the overall game plan and how you try and execute that, I don't think you can play around with too much going into the finals. This is a completely different year, so anything goes. But I think the way, what, the way that Bulldogs tore apart um, Melbourne in that second half shows you they're a bloody dangerous team. Um, well, they're, they're midfield. It's a great test for our midfield. I know yeah. our midfield is playing really well as we pumped up. But, gee, when the dogs are back hunting around the footy and their class player, McRae and Bont and that are involved, they are dangerous. And Mitch Wallace, Scotty, I know you oh. keep keeping a close eye on this, <coughs> turned himself into a really difficult matchup as a forward. Oh. He's a great one on one. He's a. He's a Brilliant kick for goal and a very smart mark. No, he's he's been the focal point. Kick four last week. I mean, Norton is the best young player on, in the business. I'm infatuated by him. I reckon he's a superstar. Yeah. So they've, I is mean, they play the pressure, the, the quick line, hand. Hey? Blue in the brown line. Uh, he, <laughs> well, he got injured. He missed a couple of games. Probably run second this year, Matthew. Second. Second. Probably win the so next Scott, five after that. 
Scotty, you can only choose one for your team for your future. Norton, Ben King or Max King as you set oh, up full forward? Air Norton by the length of the Flemington straight, Cameron. <laughs> the King boys are okay, but this kid, this kid does stuff that the others, they can only dream of, Cameron. <laughs> Come on, come on. But the dogs, uh, I mean, the dogs have got their pressure game. That's where it's going to be interesting with the cats. In tight, Libertore has been unbelievable. Geez, Bailey, Smith, the kid, oh. Bailey Smith, the kid, is a super. So he had 30 or something last week. And their handball game. So it's going to be good for the cats because it, it'll be a pressure type around the ball all the time. All right. We ask it every single week on oh. this podcast. Matthew. Where is he? You know, you're in a sanctum. You understand everything that's going on, the workings of the entire Geelong Football Club. Where is, is he? Is it this week? Nakaya. Um, I'm not so sure, Cameron. <laughs> <laughs> um, the only, look, I love cocky more than anyone. <laughs> um, but who do you take out? Or who do you rest? Oh, who We're you running want? out of time. I want to see him. I think, it, I think you're right, Scotty, though. We are running out of time, and the kid is playing for a contract for next year too. So we need to give him an opportunity to be able to showcase what he's got. I think we we um, we lack someone in our team who can just go crunch and hurt people. Um, mm-hmm. And he's our man. Um, whether the forward line can fit him, Gary Rowan, and a Sava in there, I'm not too sure. But I think it's about time that we make the room. Um, you can talk about. Um, you know, who comes in, who comes out, the resting players. The, the kid's done everything we've asked him to do. He's got right, he's got his body ready. Let's play him. That's my opinion. Um, well, I'll probably get told from guys in the footy department, but we need to see him. And the run home, like, so the Bulldogs, big game. So if you don't do it then, then you've got to buy. Then there's Essendon, Richmond, Sydney. So if he's in your plans, he has to play Essendon at the absolute least. Otherwise, yes. it's not worth it. I agree. There we go. Settled. Can we make Either it this week, this week or Essendon? I like the sound of that. Um, we're going to take a break because I want to make sure we've got plenty of time to talk to the skipper, Joel Selwood. He's going to join us uh, up in just a second. And uh, we'll find out how he's travelling with his body. Let's ask him as well about Nakai Cockatoo. Scotty, can you remember that, please? Because I always I forget what I'm supposed to do. I'm um, writing it down. <laughs> We'll ask if uh, Cocky's playing this week or if he's going to be held back until that Essendon game. Uh, we'll get to your questions a little bit later on too. And getting, we're getting closer and closer to Father's Day too. We might uh, have a little look at Geelong's best father-son combinations. See, there's been a few good ones of those. Before we take a break though, it's important to stay healthy while staying at home. That's why GMHBA have partnered with Keezer. If you're a GMHBA member with extras cover, you can access telehealth or in-centre physio from the team at Keezer with no out-of-pocket expenses up to your annual limits until September 30, waiting periods and sublimits apply. Search GMHBA Keyser for details and stay healthier at home. The skipper, the man, the best of the best, Joel Selwood, is up next. Welcome back. It is great to have you with us on to the final bell, brought to you by Panther Tyres, as promised. The skipper of the Geelong Cats. Joining us from the beautiful state of Queensland, Joel Selwood is with us. Sel, great to have you with us. How you going? G'day, Lingy. How are we, boys? It's, uh, it's good to finally be on. Be on. I'm uh, sort of the last uh, last one in the queue these days. So <laughs> oh, I've been waiting eagerly and I, here I am. I'll give you plenty. <laughs> Yes. Well, before before you give us plenty, <laughs> let's just get to one of the exciting little things that are going on at the moment. The footy club and you, I'm going to say you, the, the skipper, you're giving away your car. You were deserving right. a Geelong member. Tell us about it. Yeah, no, we should mention our, uh, our really classy friends at Ford too, Ford Australia. So that, yeah, they've helped me out with the Raptor. And if you haven't seen one of these cars, it is the most beautiful thing on the road. So... Try and uh, get a look at that. Jump on the website and have a look. But we, we do have a comp at the moment where we're going to give it away. So I've left it in good care back in Geelong. It's in a garage. I cleaned it up before I came. And um, <laughs> it's going to go to, it is going to go to one of our members, which is nice. So uh, hopefully to a really good home, I'm sure. A lot of interest in this one. <laughs> a lot of interest. But Stokes, he's got some question marks. 
around your driving, Skipper. Matthew? Joel? Brother, what's going on? <laughs> I'm going well, dog. How are you? Yeah, I can't complain. As you saw, just trying to get the kids in, in, uh, in order, as you are on the camp up there. Now, let's, talk, let's be honest about this car. Like, the Raptor is the biggest beast on the road. It's one of the scariest looking cars going around. Beautiful car. What the hell are you doing driving on it? And what, what have you done to it to give it away for free? <laughs> you know, it, it is actually funny when you're driving down Packenden Street and it's a car that probably shouldn't be seen down Packenden Street because there's not much room when you, uh, you sort of take up the lanes. But the reverse parking sensor is, works absolutely beautiful. So I have no trouble with that. And to put that to good use. And then, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm also building a house at the moment. So when I rock up in the Raptor to the work site and the boys see it, they, uh, they get quite jealous because they're like, you should not be driving that. That's a workman's car. <laughs> but it is going to a good home. Skills. It is. It is. Uh, tell us, you are enjoying sunshine. You are enjoying some freedoms up there. How is hub life? Brits come and uh, along with all the partners and families and everything like that. How's life in the hub? Uh, it's been really good. I mean, our guys have been um, fantastic and outstanding from the start. Just um, seeing the opportunity in it more than uh, seeing it as a bit of a hassle and stuff like that. So um, results obviously help. Um, and we've been playing some good footy and, we continue, and we'll continue to do that. But um, yeah, for our guys, they've just been um, exceptional the way that they've tackled uh, what's in front of them. And we know that we've still got a big month coming up um, with games games ahead, and then we'll we'll look after our own future after that. So, Skipper, explain to our listeners what can you actually do. You could go to the beach but not lie down. Is that right? You can get a coffee but not sit down. Yep. Um, we've got a couple of bikes around too, Scotty. So uh, you can we can go for a ride. Um, so it's not too different to stage three in many ways um, back at home. So and. It's just getting our head around that. I mean, we're at um, the Southport Sharks mantra. So we've got a couple of ovals around. Um, the kids are fortunate enough that there's a playground locked off for them. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it is quite a small space when we're living on top of each other. But <laughs> as I said before, uh, everyone's been behaving really well. Hey, Jolly, you, you, you and Hawkey, um, there's a love-hate relationship there with the Niggles. <laughs> And, you're, and most of the time, you're on the blunt of his jokes. Now, let's talk about Hawkey and how's he handled hub life and uh, who's winning the battle between you and Hawkey over there? Uh, he's actually been very kind to me because I think we're <laughs> outnumbered now with, uh, as, we, as the viewers know, that uh, Tom and I are in the top sort of percentile in the old guys here. So <laughs> we understand that we need each other now more than not. So... Um, the young kids will come at us and we need to have each other's back. So that's how it works. Um, but it has, it has been nice uh, having the families up here. Um, so they've all joined us. Um, not, not everyone's, but uh, we're still hopeful that uh, some more families will join us um, just to, you know, make everyone happy and finish off the year really well too. But, um, you know, seeing the kids play around and the fathers get to spend time with uh, loved ones and, and the kids, is uh, it's been awesome. Spill the dirt though, Sal. Who's got the most annoying kids and have they just scared you off ever, <laughs> ever having kids? You can't ask that. You oh, can, yeah. I like it. <laughs> it's, uh, I'm not brave enough to answer, to be honest. So <laughs> I might just let that one slip by. Uh, but um, the kids, oh yeah, we've seen challenging stages, especially when the dads pick up and go to Adelaide and the uh, the captain and Harry Taylor get left behind with Zach Tui to look after sort of a play group. <laughs> it's, uh, <laughs> I'm learning plenty. Now, Sal, so are you considering leaving Cam Guthrie in Queensland forever to play out of there? Because whatever you've done to him, he's having an extraordinary year. Hub life clearly suits him. Yeah, it is. Um, you know, quick turns around, turnaround in games really suits him. So he's one sort of just on the edge of not wanting to train ever. So <laughs> it's, uh, it's funny how it works out. You know, it's, we've just seen a lot of growth from a lot of players, not only Cam, but across the board, like um, just individuals, as I said before, just seeing this opportunity to 
take their game to the next level when you could easily look at it being really challenging and tough and use it as an excuse. It's sort of like front up and, you know, be the man to, to do the job, which has been really pleasing. One serious question I'll ever have to you, Wally, is um, obviously being able to watch um, the development of the guys this year. And like you're talking about, yep. the spread of players being able, how good is it from your perspective? You've carried a load without pumping you up too much for a long period of time. You've had the weight of the footy club and the playing group on your, on your shoulders for a long time now. To be able to go in through what you're doing, getting a little bit older, to be able to sit back and not have to feel like you're rushing to get back because you know that it's in capable hands. You know, you've got Menegal, you've got Parf, you've got Garthree, all playing their roles, doing a bit. So there's no rush for you to get back. How's that feeling to be able to sit back and watch and, and enjoy the show? Yeah, it's, it's a great point, um, Stokesy. It's, um, well, the word that I would use is, you know, you, you just have so much trust in what we're doing and the system and um, just that the boys are just going to go out and do it. Like, <clears throat> At the Adelaide game on the weekend, we can talk about, because um, it's just been and gone, but the turnaround for the boys, it was actually a, a, quite an effort to get there. They sort of flew out late at night to get there, so they didn't get much time when they were there. Woke up in the morning. It was a sort of early start. So there was a lot of things working against them. So to get a perfect performance, which we wanted, like we probably put out um, the couple of performances before that and the growth, um, would have been... Outstanding to get, but you know we saw challenges in it that um, we just need to go away and get the four points and come out of it healthy and and still grow from it. But um, it is nice to sit back and see this group grow, um, absolutely. And there's there's no better timing to do it too. When you know we're all here at the same place, um, the work that Harry did back here whilst those guys were away too, and even yesterday. Um, I saw him out with, on the ground with Sam DeConning for, you know, up to 90 minutes. You just can't buy that time. And you can't find that time within the program back in Geelong because, as we know, the, uh, the footy program's just so much. And, uh, you know, the sports and conditioning guys don't want you on their legs for that long. So, um, being really beneficial for a lot of our guys was, you know, and that's why we can, we have really, uh, we have a lot of faith in these guys that are coming in. Um, you know, we've seen plenty of them over this time. I think we've played 32, 33. There's still another four or five that are ready to go too. Just on your body, Joel, all of our listeners want to know, uh, will we see you? I've got a niggle. <laughs> <laughs> I've got a niggle, but I'll be okay. <laughs> uh, look, I'll, I'll train tomorrow with the boys um, and then I'll just see how I am, to be honest. it's uh, We'll just... You know, it is one of those ones that when you have trust in the system, you know, and these short turnarounds and, you know, we do have a little bit of a longer break after this, but I do have the ability to go into a game feeling closer to 100% than what I have in the past, um, which has been really nice um, to do because I, I just don't want to get exhausted more than anything else um, right now because of how we've set up the season so far. So, um, it will... To be honest, it'll probably come down to my decision more than um, the medical teams. And, and I'll just, yeah, go off. If, I, I don't need to be desperate, but I'll play if I'm, I feel like I'm ready and right to go. The one question that um, I think a lot of people probably are, are thinking of is um, Father's Day is coming up. 12 months away. Is it? Yeah, it's coming <laughs> up, Joel. Um, I've got my order in the bacon and eggs and a cookie. Um, 12 months coming up. Uh, in 12 months' time, you're in the hub. There's not much to do. Niggle, niggle, um, <laughs> have we got any news to tell our uh, listeners? Or <laughs> no, no, I don't, uh, Stokes. And uh, we've got we've got some exciting news coming up, though. We've got uh, I can look across the room. I can see Emma Stewart's uh, sitting next to uh, Grace Cockatoo, um, yeah. and you know they're both heavily pregnant at the moment. So. That's enough out of our group at the moment. And, uh, yeah, I mean, I did learn some lessons, as I said before, with those babies. You know, they're, they're beautiful to look at the majority of the time, but there was some testing times in there too. Just putting two to two together, you're getting rid of the Raptor, maybe you're going to the Everest. You know. Oh, mate, and that's a beautiful car too. So beautiful car. The one thing I won't be doing, I mean, I love the thought of uh, jumping in the Mustang and driving down the coast, but... Uh, I do plan on having a family one day with Britain. 
We'll, uh, we'll need a bigger car than the Mustang. <laughs> Stokesy, you just said I wasn't allowed to ask who's got the most annoying kids. You've gone for... Uh, <laughs> Too uh, far. Hurry up, Joel. You get a family going. <laughs> Well, just a, I'm putting two and two together. What, what else can you do in the hub? <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> oh dear, Scotty, what do you got for us? <laughs> I'm loving this. I've got nothing else yet. No, um, we mentioned Tomahawk Joel. I mean, we were joking, yeah. but people are saying it's the best he's ever played. I mean, it's the results are pretty impressive. As one of his best mates, what what's happened to the Tomahawk? What is it? Why is it? Oh, he's just, he's, love, he's loving footy. Um, yeah. and he always has, but he's just, I don't know, he's, you know, it's flowing really well for him at the moment. Um, the guys around him are a little bit older. You know, he's, um, as part from Brad Close, you know, he's got a bit of a, you know, Brian's close to 50 games. Um, mm. Tommy Atkins is close to 50. Um, Luke Gullihouse has been in the system for a little bit. Gary Rowan, so Osava. So it's it's a time thing. Uh, we're moving the ball better um, throughout the ground. Uh, the backs are defending extremely well. So uh, it's a bit of everything, to be honest. And and that's I mean I loved his interview after uh, who was it where he kicked six Port, or seven Port Adelaide Port Adelaide yeah. and just you know the focus and on everyone else but himself um, where he understands where the work's coming from and. He knows if he does his part, he will get the chocolate some days, but some days he won't, but he'll help us set up a, a hell of a performance anyway. And can I ask but, about the misfits like to present themselves at this lone ranges? I mean, what's it like living with them and putting up with Scarlo and his mates? Nah, it's all show, to be honest. And uh, <laughs> they've, been a, they've been a great group, you know, and that's where we've come um, this year more than ever, more than any other year, I think, is that, we understand that we need all 18 of us um, went out on the field to do it. And then when the next sort of four come on, they know exactly what they're doing. So uh, we're helping each other across the ground, you know, four set it perfectly and I'll, I'll back him up. But across the ground, we're just moving and, um, you know, moving the footy the way that we really want to. We sort of understand what we're doing right now. And there's a big confidence that the next bloke that will come in, will just do the same thing. So, uh, not that we're having, you know, it's funny because we're probably having less meetings than what we are back home and they're going for a shorter time and we're not, we're not training at all. So, <laughs> oh, it's funny, it's funny how it works in that. Is that, there is that something in it. Are you trying to get to the golf course in, in time or you can't play golf yet? <laughs> nah, I still can't play golf, but you two would have lasted much longer in footy if there was less meetings and less training <laughs> yep. too. So, uh, <laughs> Scotty, you might have even got to go. <laughs> I like the sound of it. Joe. Let's, uh, let's, not go, let's not go too far and say Scotty could get a game. He's, thank you, uh, Cameron. I let that go. He's been good in isolation, Scotland. This is training the house job. down in Bowen Heads for you, Joel. <laughs> That's good. I'll look forward to joining you over the summer, Scotty. <laughs> the bluff run. I'm killing it. Beautiful. You don't actually run, do you, Scotty? You don't you walk Cameron. in and when you see someone you know, you start jogging? We've had guests on who confirmed it. Mark Howard confirmed it many weeks ago. He can we just have to watch running... our calves, watch our calves on those loose stones, Scotty. You and I, at our age, <laughs> <laughs> the Cameron Ling calf muscles. Yes, I agree yeah. with that. Bring me into it, Scotland. Uh, I have to. One, we'll ask you about this week um, taking on the dogs uh, Friday night, Metricon yep. Stadium. It's Metricon, isn't it? It's not the Gabba. It is. It is Metricon. Yeah. Um, uh, lately, I've just been going with they're playing in Queensland. Because <laughs> uh, I'm all over the shop at times. But the dogs, a uh, little bit of just a thought or two on them before we uh, let you get back to hub life. Uh, good last week they were. Um, and they've shown some really solid performances. Uh, we, we've got to be really good around the ball. Probably a bit where we were a little bit scratchy on the weekend, um, which was noted that we just weren't as sharp as probably what we were the, the couple of weeks before that. So, um, you know... This is a game that we think is really important too. So we'll look to grow again. Um, you know, we'll put a plan in place to to, to obviously beat them, but uh, to just keep growing too, um, build that next, put that next brick on sort of thing. So building a house. Actually, actually, I do have a question about this. We've been, we said we need, Scotty, you're supposed to remind me of this. 
Oh, Nikai, yeah, what was it? Nikai, oh, yeah. two, Joel. Is it, do we see yeah. him this week? When do we see him? We're obsessed I'm with him, Joel. I'm so you desperate. i pick that up. Really? Uh, not sure. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I don't sit in match committee, and I, to be honest, it would, they go for too long, those meetings, so they're the ones that I stay out of. But um, Is he upright? Yeah. Is he walking? Is he jogging? Can we confirm he's he's running, he's And he's running fast. Um, <laughs> Nikai, you know, he's ready when needed, I think, now, which is, um, which is the exciting thing. So we've, we've got guys down there playing good footy. Um, there's just not enough spots in the side, too, so... <laughs> It is when you get your chance, you've got to make the most of it um, because the next person's ready to go, um, which is really I've healthy. A, I've got a giant circle now, Scotty, around the Bombers game. Oh, well, I That's predicted where that. my Kevin. big tech, black texter is around that game. He's playing. And Put him in. For cocky, cocky to be back. We heard it, we heard it first, first from Selzy. He's in for Essendon. <laughs> who, are we, who are we pulling out, boys? Uh, you, know, uh, you know, we don't, that's we not don't our think job. about that. We no. put it in and take him out. <laughs> uh, it's it's such, such an easy position, that one. Oh, so <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> put them in. Put them in. Oh, we throw no 10 out. names up there. That's it. We don't have to drop yeah. anyone. Uh, like and, and they are ready to go. That's the nice thing. Um, Constable Fogarty, um, Stevens, you know, the list goes on. These boys are, um, as I said before, behaving really well ready to go, and uh, Mackay is just in that group of boys, James Parsons, uh, ready to play. You shouldn't have brought Chooker's name up. Lingy's yeah, going to have a meltdown yeah, now. We'll, we'll yeah, we all like yeah. him. Uh, um, you know what, very, though, Joel? very, good man. <laughs> we'll, we'll squeeze you in if you think you're right to go. So I reckon there's a spot in there, and we might even drop someone. Jeez. All right. I'll be listening. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be listening. Uh, Salzy, you're a good man. Thank you so much for joining us. Good luck on Friday night to the team. And if you do play as well, um, enjoy the rest of the time. Keep looking after those kids, mate. You're, uh, you're doing a wonderful <laughs> job, you, Harry and Zach. Tell Reggie we miss him on the podcast as well. But Stokes, he's been a much better replacement than um, what he was doing. <laughs> Understandable. Uh, thank you. Thank you to Joel Selwood there. Always great catching up with the skipper. We're going to take a break. We'll get to your questions in just a second. Welcome back. Great to have you with us. Great to chat with Joel Selwood, the skipper of the Cats. Hope you enjoyed the chat. I always love talking with him, um, but I'm a little biased. He's my favourite player. I try and force number 14 onto the kids' backs. They want to carry on with all these blokes who kick around the corner. Grind Myers is the favourite of one of them and all that. Just put the number 14 on the back, please, boys. You can't go wrong there. Uh, before we get to your questions, just a word from one of our supporters. Deakin University. Digital, digital is in Deakin University's DNA with 40 years of experience in distance and online learning. Discover why they're the number one Australian public university for overall educational experience. Premium, proven, loved. Study online at Deakin. Alrighty, time to get to some questions, uh, which I'm going to need to get off this little email. I'm just working the technology as best I possibly can here, gents. So bear with me for a second. Actually, I've got a question for you, Scotty, before I even get to our listener question. Yes. Is, is Alex Rant seriously coming back? Oh, I'm yes. not shocked. Yes. <laughs> I'm not shocked. I mean, it, his exit was a little bit strange. He had a few issues to sort out. And I think you, you realise pretty quickly in the, in the big bad world, you don't earn six, seven, eight hundred grand a year. So I wouldn't be shocked if he returned. Because physically, okay. he would, he'd be more than fine now. He would have been over the knee problem. So, wouldn't be shocked if he re-found the love of football. Okay. Well, maybe this leads into Cam's question, one of our listeners. Any player you could add from any other club right now, just further to that, does he, if he comes back, does he go back to Richmond? Or does he end up at a different club? Well, you've got to go through the draft, though. No, he's so. contracted, though. Oh, Sorry. is he still contracted? Yes. Oh, smart by Richmond. They, they're still paying him. Oh, well, no, he'll just come back there. Uh, okay. Player from an opposition club. Well, you want to add Aaron Norton. We know that. So we don't even need to ask you, Scott. So you've just sacked Tom Hawkins. Good on you. No, it's a two-prong attack, Matthew. Two-prong, oh, two-prong. Please. Off. What, did, what ridiculous statement did Scott Gowen just make off air, Stokesy? Aaron Norton is the best contested mark in the game right now. Mm. Have yeah. you met Tom Hawkins? I love Tom Hawkins like my brother. That I don't have. 
But Aaron Norton just does stuff. Tomahawk's the best forward in the game. But I'm just well, saying he's the best player in the competition at the moment. That's true. Now I'm gonna get I'm gonna answer first now that you've upset me. Geelong, if they could have one player, it would be Nick Natanui. And that would yeah. solve all problems. I was thinking, I was thinking one of Nat Nui Grundy or Gorn, but I'm not saying that our Ruckman won't stand up big time in the finals. I don't want to diss uh, the Cats Ruckman, but yeah, one of those A graders would be very nice. Doxy? Uh, my favourite player is Charlie Cameron. Oh uh, yes, I think we. Yes. I think the one thing we lack um, in, our, in our team is um, just a small forward that can turn a game on its head. There might be like one coming back, Stokesy, who's boarding a plane on September 1st. Look out, Gary. Um, yeah. yeah, I've heard he's uh, been doing a lot of training back in Geelong. Um, I'm concerned with his training back in Geelong, though. It's with Andrew Mackey. Oh, I'm very concerned. <laughs> well, they both do each other. They don't, they don't like weights. <laughs> um, they don't do too much. They've never seen the gym very much, uh, very often. <laughs> so they probably suit each other pretty much, those two. Mac is, does a lot of leaning against the fence, just chatting um, <laughs> as he's kicking balls out the gas. No, so he's been working in hard. Be doing. All right, thank you for the question, Cam. Uh, Boothie asks, is Sam Menegola the Cats' most important player right now? I would say he, he's having an unbelievable season and very, very um, important to the Cats' chances, but not the most important. I think the man we just mentioned, Tom Hawkins, for me, is the most important. Stokesy? Yeah, Hawkey, and I think the change in the guard, I think Mitch Duncan is now, t- he's now taking the reins. I think what you've seen on the weekend, even just standing up in big t- moments, I mean, I don't feel we're ever under pressure from the Crows, but you know, we're only up by 10, 10 points, you know, 20 minutes to go, and he kicks two goals in the last bit. I mean, I think he just finds a way to stand up in big moments. I mean, he's got to do that in the finals and on the biggest stage, and I have every confidence that he will do that. But I definitely think Hawks are most important by absolute mile. Like there is a big gap now between Hawks and the rest of the team. Um, but I think Mitch Duncan is our second. Um, ben Gold's having a great year, but oh. I wouldn't put him in the top top bit of the most important players of our club. He's won me over, Cameron. I was not in Sam's uh, fan club, but. He's won me over. You're a hard man to win over too, Scotty. Oh, yeah. So that's, that's, that's big by Sam Menegola. We've, um, it's a great effort work. by him, to be honest. Hard work has got him there. Thank you for your question, Boothie. Jason asks, has there been a better tandem than Duncan to Hawkins? Well, that leads oh. beautifully from our question before. Stokesy, um, beautiful kick of the footy, Mitch Duncan. Tom Hawkins is appreciating that. So, I mean, I, I dare say... Our older listeners, Scotty, might suggest Goggin to Wade as a tandem <laughs> would be magnificent. Hocking to Ablett Senior yeah. is a uh, fairly impressive one. Stokes to Mooney back in the day. Oh, didn't they? The best buds, Stokes and Moons, as tight as tight as mates can go. The little just Stokes here just hitting up a beautiful little lead. dab yeah. kick. Yeah. Me. I, I didn't want to kick to him every time, but. If I didn't kick it to him, he'd bash me after the game. <laughs> <laughs> no I miss love um, Lee Tudor uh, talking about how him and Gary had some Gary Senior were bum bums and he had to look after him. I used to love listening to Lurker's stories about the, the old days. Well, the, the, one of the most famous passes in Cats history, that one. Lurker, the floater over the top of Mick Martin's outstretched hands to Gary Senior. Absolutely. What a day that was. I was six rows back from that behind oh. those goals. As wow. a 13 year old, complete crazy Cats fan. Oh, memories. Uh, <laughs> Simon asks Is Blitzarv the most versatile player in the league? I, I suppose he'd have to be, don't oh. you, wouldn't he? Yeah, by my would have thought. There's not too many people that can do what he does. Um, yeah, I mean, he just does what he's asked and does it efficiently. I mean, he goes back, he, he should be in all that he should. I've said this before. We've cost him a few jumpers um, with the All Australian team, um, but and I know what Blitz type of bloke he is. It's all about the team, what's best for the team. So um, to be able to go in the back line, absolutely smash an opponent, kill him, go into the ruck, go as a midfielder, then go to a wing tag. Um, the only way, the only thing he hasn't done is um, 
gone to the forward line and kick a goal. So well, he did on the weekend as well. He kicked the goal. He so did. he's done everything. Um, he probably just needs to win at Coleman and then uh, we're, we're sorted. <laughs> It'll be good. Yeah, the only people I can think of that's sort of even remotely been that versatile in the history of our game is probably Matt Pavlich and probably Adam Goods and probably the only other two guys who have been able to dominate. Well, Pav- Pavlich was all Australian full back oh. and all Australian. Yeah, and he played there ball. once for the, the year. That was a disgrace. Oh. Your mob. You were probably on that committee. No, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I reckon I might have still been playing then, Scotty. I haven't been retired that long. Christ. That was one of the worst decisions from your committee ever. Oh, he played there dear. twice for the year and made all Australian full back. You just. Are you, are you all right at the moment? You're in a bad mood. I'm no, mad for just, you. I'm just, just, the listeners are outraged at that decision. <laughs> <laughs> I represent them. Uh, very good. Um, I do have a question for you. Uh, yes. We do have... And, and thank you to those listeners who did send those questions in there. You know Father's Day is coming up, by the way. I um, didn't. It is soon. <laughs> it is fairly soon. Uh, and just before we get to this little uh, chat... Head to shop.geelongcats.com.au to browse the full range of Father's Day gifts, including clothing, socks, memorabilia and more. Deliver, delivery for Father's Day finishes 5pm this Friday and click and collect is available until Wednesday, September 2nd. So get online now to find the perfect Father's Day gift. All the dads out there will uh, appreciate something from the cats. Uh, I wanted to talk father-sons. While we're celebrating Tom Hawkins, um, I want to talk best Father son uh, in the cat's history. Now, I'm gonna. Now, I know. I, I know the obvious one, of course. You're going out on a limb with number one. No, no, yeah. So number one is <laughs> the Garys, of course. But now, Nathan. I have a challenge. Oh, Nathan, yes, Premiership player, absolutely. Correct. Ap- Apologise for that. Uh, number two. Now, which way is it? Is it? Ooh. John, John, and Matthew Scarlett, close. Or, or is it Jumping Jack and Tom Hawkins? Well, we'll we need historians to tell us who was the better player out of Jumping Jack and John Scarlett, because yeah. the that boys are very close. Nice. Jumping Jack, I think Jack was slightly better than John. I hope, I hope um, John's family doesn't mind me saying that. Um, That's a very close oh, I think, call. If, if John was still around, sadly he's not, uh, he would be very angry at me saying that. He used to, I used to love running into him down the street and he'd um, give me his very honest opinion on how the cats were travelling. <laughs> <laughs> the apple doesn't fall far from the tree between Matthew and John as far as their honesty and ruthlessness. Um, I, think he, no, I think he'd accept maybe that Jack was uh, just slightly ahead. Now, Matthew's probably still slightly ahead of Tom. Correct. With but with Tom and Jack now being in positions perhaps two and three, does that put them ahead of the Scarlets? Oh, I'm not going to be the one to say that, Matthew. You better say that. I'm scared <laughs> of Matthew Scarlet. You know that. I love, I love Mr. Jumping Jack. And Hawkey is probably my all-time favourite player. But Matty Scarlet was, I think, in our era, the absolute best I just thought I, I I can't speak highly enough for Matty Scarlett. I um yep. in that in so in that respect I put him as number two because he carries it. it and and John Scarlett played 183 games or something, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, yep. Played one so, more than Jack. I've done my stats. So so got a I I I'm with you on Matthew Scarlett, by the way. Yeah. Um com- completely. Tom Hawkins. I know we're giving him love at the moment and everyone on this podcast is, this is a complete pro Hawkins podcast. I still think, strangely enough, there is, there are, is a certain section of the Geelong fan community who still gets frustrated and for some reason doesn't rate Tom as highly as what we do. Tom Hawkins, does he go down as uh, in the top, I'm going to call it, I mean, it's hard to argue with Doug Wade kicking a thousand goals, but the top two or three permanent key Geelong forwards in their entire history. 
So what are you calling Gary Senior then? So Gary, a... Gary, Gary Senior, I'm probably not putting as that, even though he did play three years and won three Coleman's, which was unbelievable. <laughs> Gary's the best player. Ever. All right, well, um, who's Hawk up against? So Wade, Hawkins. Stoneham. No, he's um, had a better career than Stoneham, who was cut Fred, short with injury. Fred Flanagan. Don't know his work uh, as well. Freddie Waller. Um, George Kinnunen. I old. always, I leaned at Tomahawk. Yeah, he won a premiership by himself in the second half, of 2011. Like that was just talk about a coming out parade. And he's <laughs> he's averaged 60 to 70 goals, won the goal kicking a gazillion times. We know there's no hundred goal kickers in the AFL anymore, so that's not going to happen. I reckon his number. Well, yeah, if you don't include Gaz, I think he's second. Yeah, good. No, that's all right. I, I agree with you completely. I just, for some reason, I feel there's still a small part of the Cats supporter population who don't see it that way. I think he's just... Aside, so once he um, just destroyed that grand final in 2011, from then onwards, he had, I think he had one down season when he basically couldn't bend up and bend over and couldn't run yeah. because his back was completely stuffed. Apart from that... He has been unbelievable. He's constantly their leading goal kicker. He won a BNF, didn't he? One BNF. And taking he won on second two one or three this year. at a time. Yeah. He no, would have that's all right. Who would win, though, Cameron? Who would win out of a Scarlet and Hawkins battle? Ooh. <laughs> I refuse to answer that for fear of Matthew Scarlett. Um, <laughs> oh, really? no, that'd be what that'd be. I would just love to sit back, have a beer, and watch that. That would have been incredible. Do you know what, Scarlet. though? If this was. If this was in a match and there was no one inside 50 um, and the ball's coming in, it would be one of the great battles to watch. But if Hawk ever marked one of them, <laughs> Scarlett would first of all make sure that he earned every single <laughs> touch he got. There'd be ear massages galore. And then Scarlett would wander up and start swearing at us midfielders and blame us <laughs> for the ball coming in too easy. Um, oh, it'd be. Who, who do you think would win at Stokesy? Ah, no, I won't go there. No. One of my favourite teammates of all time, those two. So, no, I'll I'll stay clear of that one. Thank you. One of the other father sons, uh, and of course we've got a father-daughter with the Cats at the moment, Millie Brown, daughter of Paul Brown, uh, playing as well. The current uh, Ablett, Hawk and Simpson, Jed Buse, who's doing a wonderful job, and Oscar Brownless. Billy would be disappointed we didn't throw his name in for the um, the key forwards there. So, sorry, Billy. Uh, The the best thing about the father-son... Lingy, is what happens in 15 years. I mean, we've all got boys now. Um, <laughs> we're all going to be, we're all competitive, you know, from Archie Johnson to Jet Milburn. Number one, Archie Johnson. Uh, Archie Johnson be, uh... He's got a, he'll carry the torch if, if I've ever seen it. But, um, you know, Curls boys, you know, Moons has got Jagger. You've got a couple. I've got a couple. Burns, he's got uh, Charlie. I mean, they're, 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 it goes endless. You've got Jimmy. There's, there's no way. Ne- there's no way I'm letting those precious, innocent, naive little ling boys anywhere near you. Lot of ruffians. <laughs> your your lot. I'll haven't... lead them astray. My, That's a my real little boy angels. Boy school, uh, boy school talking there, Cameron Ling. <laughs> <laughs> Don't make me uh, air your dirt out on. <laughs> yes, right. come on, no, one, no, one no, bit no. a week, Stokesy. One, one never, nugget a week. Never happened. Unfortunately, we've run out of time, Stokesy. <laughs> we'll have to get to that one in a future podcast. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, yeah, we better go. Actually, we have spoken long enough. Friday night, that's taking on the Bulldogs. Metricon Stadium, I think 7.50 the game is. It should be a ripping game. Great midfield battle coming up there. We will be back next week, won't we, Scotty? We'll see if Aaron Norton or Tom Hawkins is the best contestant mark in the game. I'll be monitoring with my pen and paper. We'll be coming for you if you're wrong. Uh, Stokesy, thank you. Have a wonderful week and weekend. I'll chat to you next week. Scotty, thank you. And thank you to all our listeners out there. Hopefully we're talking a cat's win next week.